it takes two to tango. That saying means that sometimes it takes two parties to work together to get something done. In the real world, contracts are frequently multi-parties. In this video, we're going to go through a simple scenario where two parties must work together to get one thing done and to get something meaningful in a contract. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Hi, this is Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. In previous videos, we looked at very simple scenarios with one signatory in the template. In the real world, however, typically we are dealing with more than one signatory. In this video, we're going to look at a pattern called the Initiate and Accept pattern, in which one signatory will initiate a proposal and the other signatory will accept it, thereby entering both of them into the contract as signatories. Let's get started. All right, here's my problem. Well, it's not my problem, but a problem that we can look at. As kids grow up, they get smarter. Well, it's not a problem, but they do get a little too smart. There seem to be three phases for these kids. The first phase is when they're too young and there are no chores for them. But as they get older, they can help around the house and you may pay them um, a dollar or two or maybe in, it, maybe something else to help around the house. Then there's the third phase that some kids go into. This is the very strange phase three where they tell you what they want to do and they would demand that they get paid by it. And that's what my boy did. He told me what he wants to do and how much he wants for it. Yeah, right. If you're not a parent, allow me to enlighten you. This is Fortnite. Fortnite is a computer game you can play on the Xbox and other devices. And this is Roblox, another game that you can play on many devices. Fortnite has something called a V-Bucks, and Roblox have Robux. In both cases, you need hardcore cash to buy these tokens so that you can go buy yourself a new suit or weapon or, or a new avatar. Um, they are very popular with kids, and they are new ones like Among Us. Every time I ask my kids, they tell me I'm a sus, and they wouldn't tell me how it works. But whether I'm a sus or not, I think I can come up with a diplomatic win-win solution that will make everybody happy. How about a smart contract app between me and Ethan, my boy, um, that can formalize a contract for a paid chore? So he can propose something and um, I can choose to accept it or not. That sounds fair to me. Well, before we proceed, let's run it through a checklist. First, we need to ask ourselves if, uh, if we're tracking something of value. Yeah, we're tracking something of value, valuable to me to get a chore done and valuable to uh, the child to get the points and the money. Is there data change that we are tracking? Yes. As chores get done and measured, I guess, uh, we, can, we can track that data change. Is the history important? Yes. The history of what was done uh, and what was negotiated has to be kept in the ledger and things should always be immutable so that there's no argument about what was agreed upon. And the actions that we can take at the end of chore, uh, such as releasing the money. Let's take a look at the components of this architecture. The first step would be the asset. In this case, the asset would be the V-Bucks or in our case, cash that can be used to buy V-Bucks. The parties involved, the people, would be myself and the child. That should be straightforward. And then there's always the data that we need to worry about. And in this case, it's really a checklist of things that are completed. And finally, uh, we have the business logic, if we want to call this a business. Um, the logic would be uh, for the work that's done correctly, V-Bucks are awarded. That should be straightforward. Now, the architecture should be pretty clean. We have the child and then we have the parent. The child will have a couple of choices. The first is to propose something or to revise something. And at this point, it's really just a proposal. It's not a uh, agreement at this point because the parent will get to reject or accept and there'll be negotiations uh, in, in this flow. And if it's accepted, it becomes an agreement, it becomes a contract, 
with both signatories authorizing it. And, uh, and we'll test it in a navigator and run it in this demo sandbox. Let's build this. Let's fire up a terminal. And uh, what we are going to do is to create a new demo project using the empty skeleton template. There is a skeleton template and an empty skeleton template. We're going to do the empty skeleton and let's make sure we CD into the folder and then run demo studio to fire up VS code. Here we are in uh, VS code. And we're going to create a new demo file. Let's call it main.daml. Oops, wrong folder. Let me move it to the demo folder. And in the demo.yaml file, we're going to add a line here to make sure that we can use the demo script. And that is set. Now for the parties, I'm going to add um, my name and my son's name. And that's all we need for now. Uh, let's dive into the .daml file. So first line is always module daml, and then we're gonna in the second line we're gonna import the daml script. And let's break this uh, for a second. We have the proposal and we have the contract. So the proposal is what's going to be initiated and proposed, and then when it's accepted, it becomes a contract. And so let me just create two types, one for the proposal and one for the contract. So remember that the workflow here is that the proposal will be made first, will be initiated, and then once it's accepted, it becomes a contract. So let's go ahead and wire up the template. We're going to use uh, two parties, uh, just to keep it simple, the child and the parent, and then a, a chore that is being described or proposed, and a note a field just to pass messages back and forth. The signatory at this case, at this level, will be the child. And the child can do two things. Um, one is to make a proposal to the adult, and two is to revise the proposal if it's rejected. So for the proposed choice, uh, it's going to return a chore proposal uh, contract and what's going to happen is uh, we're going to simply create a contract. And for re for uh, the revision, we're going to do a revised choice. And we are just going to take a, a revision input and a feedback input as the, the notes that you want to pass to the parent. And what are we going to do there? Well, we will, um, we will create the same contract and add it to the to the chain. Uh, we will add a new description of a chore that we would like to do and then pass a note. So that should be good. Uh, so this is what the child can do. And then there will be a section where the uh, what the, for what the parent can do. So let's uh, wire up the controller for that. So the parent can do uh, two things, reject it, send it back, or accept it. So if they reject it, uh, we're going to have a reject choice. It, it too will return a new contract proposal and with some feedback, uh, maybe the reason why it's rejected. And when that happens, the action that we'll take is that we'll create a new contract with the feedback. Now, if they do accept it, something else uh, is different. We are not going to return a proposal. We're going to return a contract because past this point, we are saying that we like what we're seeing. So we are going to create a chore contract because we are good to go forward. And the, the parent in contract and the child in contract will be officially added in as the signatory both will authorize it so and um, we should be good with this uh, but let's add in the chore because uh, there may be a revision of the chore name uh, of the description of the chore so let's just say um, the chore name 
So we will be able to create a chore contract using those three inputs. Now for the next template, uh, we're gonna do a contract. So this contract template will be used only when the child and the parent both agree to creating it together. So we are gonna take in three um, parameters. Oops, not equal, colon. Um, and the signatory will be both the parent and the child. This is where the two signatories come in. And uh, that should be good. And what we'll do is we'll write some script to test it. We are going to have this script return a contract ID, not a proposal. Um, and uh, we're going to first assign parties to play with. So that will be the parent and the child. And then these are the following uh, scenario that we'll take. That Ethan proposes to a chore. And then Steve, the dad, uh, didn't like the term, so he rejects it. Um, and um, he gives a feedback, if that's what we want to call it. And he revised, the child revises the terms, uh, gets more realistic about uh, what he wants to do and, f and for how much. And the dad likes it and accepts it. So let's uh, assign a party. And then the adult or the parent, which is yours truly. And Ethan is really the name of my son, by the way. And so the first proposal, let's uh, do a, a submit. Let's submit this following. We'll create a command. It will be a proposal. And it will take on the following. It will have a child's name. It will have a parent's name. It will also have the chore that is... Uh, that a child is proposing to do. So maybe he wants to take out today's recycles for uh, 5,000 V-Bucks. And I think that's like 32 US dollars, which is a lot. And the, the note that he's adding to it is, please, I don't want to be default. Um, God forbid he is a default. So no default. So he wants to have some V-Bucks to buy uh, stuff to make him look good in the game. Uh, so Steve is going to reject the proposal and he's going to exercise the on. He's going to exercise on the Ethan proposal one, the reject choice. Uh, and the feedback that the, the dad is going to give is, uh, you're joking, right? Try all month. <laughs> Not very nice, but we got to be realistic here. Um, and so the child now has a choice to uh, revise it, and he does. So we will have him uh, do a proposal two as the revised proposal. And uh, the, the choice that's going to be exercised is called the, uh, has to be done on that one that was rejected. Uh, he's going to exercise the revised choice on that. And by providing a revision of the terms, he says that now he's going to take out the recycles um, for four times this month. And uh, he lowered his uh, price to uh, 3,000 V-Bucks. And the feedback he gave is a little sassy, but uh, he writes, fine, how about this? And the dad decides that he has had enough fun with him, with the boy. So he's going to go ahead and accept it. But who pays $30 to take out the recycles? Super expensive. All right, so the dad is going to go ahead and accept it. And that's all we need to write. Oops, sorry about that. Let's uh, correct that. And this automatically change the child events it should be child and everything uh, looks clean and we are ready for the sandbox and navigator so let's go to the terminal and do a demo start inside of the chores app uh, folder it compiles to a dar file 
and launches the sandbox first. Let me just double check to the YAML file. All looks good here. And after the sandbox is up, fantastic. After the sandbox, we should see the navigator. Perfect. And now we have the navigator UI. Uh, we'll log in first as the boy. And the boy uh, sees the templates and clicks on the one that creates a proposal. Notice that the um, navigator doesn't know who is the parent and who is the child. That's why you see all the templates. But he's going to propose to take the, the recycles out tonight for 5,000 V-Bucks. Uh, exorbitant. Uh, and uh, add a note that he thinks will convince me. And he submits it. And the check tells me that it was added into the ledger. Fantastic. Uh, double checking. Perfect. So let's see what we see as the as the adult. I see a contract waiting for me and I read the terms and I'm like, mm, uh-uh. 5,000? Reject. Why reject? Uh, because uh, I think he's joking. Right, let's try. Uh, let's counter it with, uh, let's try all month for 3,000. Now that goes to him. Uh, if I take a look at my contract, you see that I archived his proposal. I sent and I sent one back to him. Fantastic. Uh, now let's um, log in as the boy. He goes in and he sees that his archive, his is archived. And uh, hey, here's a, a counter from dad. Um, and he decides to be to play it smart and. Um, revise his terms and they said look I'll take them out three times well I think in the script it was four times for 3,000 and he uh, decides to um, add a note a nice and friendly note to me and sends it back and that tells me that it has been logged yep and now there are two archived and a active one this is the active one that was his proposal revised proposal and the dad sees it and the dad sees that he uh, there are new terms being proposed likes it accepts it now if i go to my contract there's only one active contract which is the chore contracts all the proposals have been archived and there are two signatories perfect how about the boy the boy goes into his contract yep same case and the contract is active and there are two signatories. So this is now an active contract. And now we see if he really performs the chores. So I hope that clarified the initiate and accept design pattern. Now for more than two signatories, we recommend using the multi-party agreement, but we'll cover that in a future video. I got more content lined up for you. In the meantime, I gotta get the kit to take out the recycles until next time, bye-bye.